as the American League champions will start it off tonight with David Eckstein at short. Batting second in center field, Darren Erstad. Hitting third in right field, Tim Salmon. Garrett Anderson in left field bats fourth. Troy Gloss at third base hits fifth. Brad Fulmer, the DH, bats sixth. Scott Spezio at first base hits seventh. Benji Molina, the catcher, bats eighth. And Adam Kennedy at second base will bat number nine. On the mound, 34-year-old right-hander Kevin Apier, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's loosening up as we speak. 0-1 in the postseason in four starts, 6.23 ERA, a 14-12 record during the regular season. The home plate umpire tonight in Game 6 of the World Series, Tim McClellan. The crew chief, Jerry Crawford, will umpire first base. Angel Hernandez at second. Tim Cheetah at third. Mike Winters will be the left field umpire. Mike Riley, the umpire in right. We are just a few minutes away from the start of the action. And once again, to bring you the play-by-play of Game 6 of the 2002 World Series, here's Rory Marcus. Thanks so much, Terry. The Angels on the field. The uh, Giants coming to bat here in the top of the first inning. And we're just about underway. It is 4.57 p.m., 66 degrees. That's brought to you by Hotwire. Looking to get more for your travel dollar? Log on to Hotwire for deep discounts on flights, hotel rooms, and car rentals. Hotwire partners with quality travel companies to bring you amazing deals you can't find anywhere else. Log on to Hotwire. Log on to Hotwire today to see how much you can save on your next trip. Kevin Apier loosening up. He has one more walk than he has strikeouts in the postseason. That's not a great statistic to have, but I have a feeling in talking to Kevin earlier today, he's relaxed and ready to go. I said, Kevin, you can do this, and he said, I know. So he is ready to go, and we'll see what happens here in Game 6 of the World Series. Angels have won more than twice as many games at home than they have lost, and the Halos need two more home victories to capture the World Series. Kenny Lofton will be the first hitter of the ball game. The San Francisco center fielder wears number one on his back. He steps up there. And Apier's ready to go. The Angels infield, Spezio at first, Kennedy at second, Eckstein the shortstop, Gloss at third, in the outfield, Anderson in left, Erstad in center, Salmon in right. And Benji Molina behind the plate. Apier into his windup. The first pitch of game six is a little high, ball one. Lofton showing the bunt there. Lofton will be followed by Aurelia and Kent here in the top of the first inning. Apier winds. Here comes the 1 0 pitch. That one has popped up on the left side. Eckstein and Gloss have a chance. Eckstein calling for it. He makes the catch in fair territory. And little Darren Baker goes racing out there to pick up the bat left behind by Lofton. One out on the pop fly to shortstop. I really think the first inning is critical tonight for the Angels and Apier. If he can shut the Giants down in the first inning, and I don't mean without a hit, I mean without a run, not fall behind and maybe the Angels jump on Ortiz for a run or two early, that would be huge for the Angels not to fall behind in this game. But the first inning sets the tone. Napier is usually a pitcher who the second time around against the team seems to pitch better. He was roughed up in game two, but he has a chance to redeem himself in game six of the World Series. Rich Aurelia at the plate. Hitting 300 in the postseason. Here's the windup by Apier, the pitch to Aurelia. Good breaking ball. That's in for a strike. Tim McClellan is the home plate umpire tonight. Jerry Crawford at first, Angel Hernandez at second, Tim Cheetah at third. Mike Winters down the left field line, Mike Riley down the right field line. No balls in the strike. Here he comes, 0 1 to Aurelia. Curve ball missed a little bit inside. One out, nobody on. Top of the first inning, game six of the World Series from Edison Field in Anaheim. Rory Marcus along with Terry Smith. Our producer engineer, Darren Chan, as he has been for every game all season long. And Frank Lafarelli, same thing back at the studio. The 1 1 delivery, fastball is hit in the air into shallow center field. Erstad comes in underneath it. Darren is there, two outs. Two up, two down for the Giants in the first. And now Jeff Kent coming to the plate. 
Kent hit two home runs in the Giants victory in game five. He has seven RBIs and three home runs in the series hitting 271. So Kent about to step in the Giants second baseman. 15 postseason games 271. Apier goes into his windup. The pitch to Jeff Kent. Fastball strike called. 0 and 1, a 91 mile an hour fastball, which for Apier is pretty good. That's very good. He will rarely even reach 90, so that's unusual. Hands together in the glove. He goes into his windup. Here's the 0 1 pitch. That's taken low and inside. One ball, one strike. Two out, nobody on. The Giants at bat, top of the first inning. When Apier faced the Giants here on Sunday in game two of the World Series, he had a 1 2 3 first inning, but then in the second inning, he gave up four runs, including a couple of homers. Here comes the 1 1 pitch to Kent. Breaking ball. He thought about it, but lets it go by outside and low. Bonds, of course, is on deck. Two balls and one strike to Jeff Kent. The Angels and Giants game six the Angels trying to force a game seven tomorrow the Giants trying to knock them out tonight 2 one pitch is hit right back up the middle that's a base hit into center field a line drive single to center field for Jeff Kent and that will bring up bonds with two outs and we'll see what the Angels decide to do when Apier faced the Giants in game two the two times he faced bonds he walked him. I don't think it'll be an intentional walk but uh, well yes it is going to be an intentional walk. They're not even going to bother with it. They'll put bonds on. Well the Angels infielders weren't sure they had the shift on thinking the Angels were going to pitch to them and now everyone has moved back into their normal spots for the intentional walk. There's ball two so they'll move Jeff Kent up to second base. Put Bonds at first and with two outs they'll pitch to Benito Santiago. So this will be a very big at bat for both for Santiago of course and for Apier as he tries to get out of the first inning without a run scoring. This is the seventh time that Bonds has been intentionally walked here in the World Series. He has 11 walks overall. Two on two out for the Giants in the first. Benito Santiago chatting with the home plate umpire Tim McClellan as he steps in. The umpires uh, face some time off too. McClellan has not been behind the plate in five weeks. Hopefully he's not rusty back there. I don't think he would be. Santiago 246 in the postseason with a couple of home runs 16 runs batted in. Giants have played 15 postseason games one more than the Angels. And Apier taking a walk around the mound. The crowd making some noise. The Thunder Sticks always make noise as they try to get out of this first inning. Kent at second, Bonds at first. Kent a two out single. Bonds the intentional walk. And Santiago digging in. Apier with a determined look, looking in for his sign. Kevin into his stretch. First pitch to Santiago. Breaking ball inside. Ball one. Started him with the curveball. Apier has thrown just 14 pitches. That's not bad. And four of them, of course, don't really count as they were intentional passes for Bonds. If he can get out of this by getting Santiago, he'd be in pretty good shape. The Giants are thinking they'd like to strike early right here. Here's the 1 0 pitch inside almost hit him. A fastball right at the belt buckle and Santiago jumped out of there. This inning so typical of so many innings we've seen from Apier this year. Uh, things started off fine. He retired the first two batters but now two are on with two outs and you have to sweat out just about every pitch now to see if he can get out of this trouble. Two balls and no strikes to Benito Santiago. Kent at second, Bonds at first. Two down in the first. 
The check of the runners by Apier and the 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball in there. Pretty good pitch by Kevin. Benito Santiago asking Tim McClellan about it. Apier going with the curveball 2-0. He needed a strike there. Now two balls and one strike. The Angel fans kind of anxiously and nervously watching this at bat. They'll let loose with a big cheer if Apier gets out of this jam. Here comes the 2 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Santiago was fooled on that one. He asked McClellan again, was that a strike? I don't think it was. Breaking ball. Well, it was close. It was down low. Two balls, two strikes. He really got off a late swing on that off speed pitch. That ball was just about in the glove of Benji Molina before Santiago went after it. He was really fooled on it. Two balls, two strikes, two out. First inning. Apier checks the runners, and here comes the 2 2 pitch. Popped up. He's going to get out of it. It's on the infield. Foul ground. Spezio makes the catch. So they walk Bonds intentionally, and it pays off in the first inning. No runs, a hit, no errors, and two left. To pitch the bottom of the first, Ortiz 2 0 oh in the postseason, although he was battered around by the Angels in game two, knocked out in the second inning, but did not figure in the decision because the Giants came back and actually had a lead in that game after Ortiz left, trailing 5 0. Ortiz went 14 and 10 in the regular season with a 3.61 earned run average. He started 33 games this year. He completed only two. David Eckstein to lead things off for the Angels in the bottom of the first. Eckstein having a good postseason 311 just as he had a good regular season. Ortiz's first pitch is on the inside corner strike. 0-1 to David Eckstein. He'll be followed by Darren Erstad and Tim Salmon for the Angels here in the bottom of the first inning. Now the 0-1 to Eckstein. Down at his feet, he staggers out of there a little bit. One ball and one strike. Game six of the 2002 World Series and a sold-out Edison Field crowd decked out in red tonight. The 1-1 pitch, way up high, ball two. Ortiz had a lot of trouble locating his pitches in game two. That's exactly right, Rory. He got behind hitters as he's doing right now, and he really paid for it last Sunday. His 2-1 pitch is popped in the air down the left field line. It's playable. Bonds over toward the line in fair territory makes the catch. One out, Eckstein flies to left, and Erstad coming up. Russ Ortiz, 28 years old, born in Encino. He lives in Gilbert, Arizona now, 6'1", 210 pounds. He has 63 victories over the last four years. The most by a giant since Juan Marichal and Gaylord Perry. Marichal had 77 in a four-year stretch. Erstad at the plate. Darren hitting 354 in the postseason and Ortiz first pitch to him fastball in for a strike 0 and 1 Giants defensively JT Snow at first Jeff Kent at second Rich Aurelia the shortstop David Bell at third Barry Bonds in left Kenny Lofton in center Reggie Sanders in right and Benito Santiago is the catcher. Here's the 0 1 to Erstad a ground ball hit to the right side played by Kent he fires it to Snow and Erstad is retired. Two up, two down in the first inning. After Russ Ortiz struggled in game two of the World Series, his pitching coach Dave Rigetti told him, I want you to pay close attention to the next three games. Maybe there might be something you pick up watching our other pitchers start. Maybe you might pick up some tendencies as far as the Angels hitters. Ortiz said he did watch carefully and that he did pick up a few things. He wasn't going to share it with anyone. He said, I'll keep that to myself. But he said he felt that by watching the last three games that he would be a better pitcher here tonight. We'll see. So far so good for Ortiz two up two down and now Tim Salmon at the plate. 
Ortiz both feet on the mound as he holds his hands together gets the sign and delivers to Salmon breaking ball it's low and outside for ball one. Two out nobody on Angels at bat here in the bottom of the first inning no score on a beautiful night for baseball temperature in the mid 60s still a little bit of sunshine. And the Angels just hoping the sun shines on them on their home field tonight and they can play again tomorrow. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Salmon that's a fastball inside ball two. Salmon's had two home runs in the World Series one of them coming off of Ortiz in game two on Sunday. Two balls and no strikes to Tim. Salmon waits ahead on the count two and oh let's see if he gets one he can hit. No he gets one low and inside ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Thunder sticks have caught on elsewhere but I don't think that any fans are using them as well as the Angels nope. just yet. Here comes the 3 0 pitch. That's a strike. Three and one to Tim if he gets on Garrett Anderson would be next for the Angels who have their DH back tonight. Brad Fulmer playing in the American League Park. It's three and one to Salmon. Ortiz delivers and it's right down the middle. Good fastball strike two. Three and two. Salmon hesitated that time. Full count to Tim. Three balls two strikes. Russ Ortiz trying to have a one two three inning to get his night underway. The Giants right hander goes into his windup. Here comes the three two pitch. It's popped up foul. That's going to go out of play a little bit off to the right. Back up into the upper deck. And the count remains full three and two. Fans are booing because that ball went into the little covey of giant fans up there. Three balls two strikes. Two out nobody on base. Salmon batting in the bottom of the first. Russ Ortiz winds and the three two pitch is grounded to third base. Bell has the two hopper. He'll get Salmon and both pitchers have a scoreless first inning. Ortiz has a one two three inning. At the end of one inning Giants nothing Angels nothing on the Anaheim Angels baseball network. Now snow steps in there. And the first pitch to JT is outside ball one. Alex Rodriguez is here tonight the Texas Rangers shortstop. Apier staring in behind him the count one and oh and snow backs out of there. Snow hitting 310 in the postseason with a couple of home runs. Nine runs batted in. He's had 18 hits since the playoffs began and he swings and misses at a fastball. One ball and one strike. JT Snow got loose before the game today being uh, entertained by actor slash comedian Robin Williams who's here at the ballpark. JT wanted to meet him. Never met him before. Always admired his work and they met a little bit earlier here today at Edison Field. Here's the 1 1 pitch. There's a fly ball into center field. Erstad goes back. He makes the catch. One out, and Reggie Sanders up. JT didn't ask Robin if he could develop his World Series pictures for him, did he? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what was that movie we saw? Uh, one hour photo. Photo, right? Yeah. Oh, that was scary. <laughs> Robin was great in that, though. Did a good job. Here is Reggie Sanders. Sanders is hitting just 200 in the postseason. A couple of home runs, six RBIs. He was hitting the ball well the first couple of games here in Anaheim, but he's kind of slowed down since then. Apier into his windup, the pitch to Sanders. Breaking ball stayed inside for ball one. One out, nobody on. Giants batting top of the second inning. No score in the game. Apier gave up three home runs in game two of the World Series, and one of them was by Sanders who's batting another one uh, by Bell who's waiting on deck. Apier's 1 0 pitch to Sanders. There's the curveball strike. 
And it's one and one. No scoring threats really, not yet. Runners at first and second for the Giants in the first inning with two outs. And Santiago popped up to end the inning. The Angels went down one, two, three in their half of the first against Russ Ortiz. Here's the one one to Sanders. Good curveball, strike two. Got it in there at the knees. Apier has that big sweeping curveball. The slider, more or less, is an unusual slider in that it drops significantly. He doesn't throw it all that hard. It's not like a say a Frankie Rodriguez slider or Brendan Donnelly slider. More like a sinker. Here's the one two pitch to Reggie Sanders. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And he got him with a curveball. Apier looks sharp early. Two outs. He does. And we mentioned at the very top he's a guy that rarely has back to back bad outings he's coming off a bad one obviously in game two he's also a pitcher that when he faces a team a second time as he is facing the Giants now a second time here in this World Series he always seems to pitch better. Now David Bell stepping in. Bell's had a good postseason he's had a pretty good run here in the World Series also. Since the playoffs began he's hitting 327. He's had some key hits including the one that won the 4 3 game in San Francisco off of Rodriguez. There's a pitch down low for a ball 1 0. It's a guy who gives you a lot of stuff out of that eight hole. He hit 20 home runs this year. Mentioned he's hitting over 300 in the playoffs. Very valuable that deep in the order. Apier comes back 1 0 and it's on the outside corner one ball one strike. Not unlike Adam Kennedy really. A little bit more power than Adam. Yep, but a guy who, uh, like Adam Kennedy, is a, a producer for you, low in that order, and that's what you like. One ball, one strike, two out, nobody on. Now it's Apier who's working on a one, two, three inning. If he can get Bell, who swings and fouls one back up into the seats. One and two, the count. And the crowd making noise, trying to will Apier on to a one, two, three second inning. We have no score in the ball game. Kevin looking in, getting his sign from Benji Molina. The veteran right-hander winds and delivers, and Bell takes low and inside. Apier's best year, it's been almost 10 years, 1993, he won 18 games. 1992, he had his best earned run average of 2.48. The best strikeout performance he ever had, 13, but the last time he did it, that was six years ago. And he strikes out Bell with a slider. Bell goes down swinging. Apier strikes out two and gets the Giants in order in the second. At the end of an inning and a half, Garrett Anderson at the plate to start the second. First pitch by Ortiz, swung on and missed, 0 and 1. World Series Game 6 brought to you by Thermacare. Feel the difference between can't and can. Garrett does not have an extra base hit in the World Series. He does have seven singles. He has two postseason home runs and he's driven in 10 runs. But in the series he's been getting hits but not real significant hits. They'd like for him to get going a little bit. There's a pitch outside to him one ball and one strike. The only player in the majors with more extra base hits than Anderson during the regular season was Alfonso Soriano. So very unusual to see Garrett with just seven singles in the World Series. Ortiz comes back 1-1 and the breaking ball is outside ball two. Garrett will be followed by Troy Gloss and then Brad Fulmer. Two balls and one strike. Ortiz delivers 2-1 and it's hit in the air into center field. That ball's well hit. Kenny Lofton on the track and he makes the catch. Garrett just missed one right there. He hit that right at the rocks out in left center field. Lofton, when he first started back, was looking like he was thinking he might have to leap up and try and rob Garrett of a home run. But it slowed down and he was able to catch it without jumping. 
That was a good at bat though by Garrett Anderson. He drove that ball a long way. He'll have a few more trips to the plate before this one's over. One out and Troy Gloss coming up. Gloss with seven postseason home runs. Ortiz into his wind up his first pitch to Troy. Breaking ball in there called strike 0 and 1. They play him very deep. Lofton's way back there in center field but straight away. No balls one strike. Ortiz delivers. Oh they knocked him down again. A lot was made of the fact that Jason Schmidt knocked Gloss down in game five and now here in game six Ortiz puts a little chin music in there to gloss. Well sooner or later the Angels are going to have to do the same thing to one of the Giants big batters. Yeah it worked pretty well for the Giants last game. One ball and one strike to Troy Gloss. Into his windup goes Ortiz. And the 1 1 pitch is hit high in the air, but foul left side. Gloss is mad at himself because he got the pitch he wanted right there and fouled it off. Oh, look out. Somebody almost went tumbling over the rail there in the second deck. No, you're not kidding. That was his pitch right there. He'd love to have that one back. If the Angels do come inside and knock somebody down, it's, they're not going to do it to Dunstan. They'll wait till Kent or Bonds is up there. Here comes the one two pitch to gloss fastball high two balls two strikes. Russ Ortiz has retired the first four men he has faced here in the second inning or here in the ball game. We're in the second inning. The two two pitch in the dirt skips by Santiago ball three full count to Troy. He went to a full count to Salmon and got him. Now he's full to gloss. Bottom of the second, no score in the game. Plenty of air traffic here once again with a lot of airplanes carrying banners. The blimp is up there. The flyover was magnificent today. And the 3 2 pitch to Troy Gloss. Swing and a foul there near home plate. Count remains 3 and 2. Gloss saying something to home plate umpire Tim McClellan and I think he asked him if he was all right that foul ball came back and whacked Tim right on the face mask. Three balls two strikes one out nobody on Gloss waiting. Ortiz delivers three two and it's inside ball four the Angels first base runner of the night. And now Brad Fulmer who had to sit there and agonize on the bench up in San Francisco with no DH gets a chance to hit. And hit against his ex prep teammate when they faced each other in game two here on Sunday Fulmer batted once against Ortiz and had a hit against them. Before Fulmer steps in let's pause 10 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. This is the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. You're listening to the Anaheim Angels on Talk Radio AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles. Home of Michael Jackson weekdays 9 till noon. Fulmer waiting gloss at first the pitch to Brad hard slider caught the inside corner 0 and 1 maybe a cut fastball there. Fulmer backs out takes a look down at Ron Renneke coaching at third base. Alfredo Griffin is up into the ear of gloss at first. Snow holding him on. No score in the second. And Fulmer waiting on Ortiz. Spezio will be next. Ortiz sets. Here comes the 0 1 pitch. Outside with it. The Daily News ran a photograph of Ortiz and Fulmer in their high school team picture. Ortiz was standing right behind Brad in that one at Montclair Prep in Van Nuys. Ortiz said that he was kind of the, the quiet type in high school that Brad Fulmer was the big star kind of the big man on campus. One ball one strike to Fulmer. 
Russ Ortiz delivers and it's high and outside ball two. Gloss is getting a very good leadoff at first base. The count now is two and one to Fulmer. The right side is open. With the jump that Troy is getting, Sosha might roll the dice right here and try a hit and run. Two and one the count to Brad Fulmer. Gloss away from first. Ortiz checks him. Gloss does not go, and the pitch is hit the other way. Foul off to the left out of play. Two balls, two strikes. They're bunching Fulmer up the middle with Bell well off the line at third base. Aurelio over toward the bag at second. It's two balls and two strikes to the Angels designated hitter. One out one on second inning. Fulmer waits Russ Ortiz checks gloss at first. And here comes the 2 2 a little pop fly to shortstop Aurelia still on the dirt makes the catch. So two down and Scott Spezio stepping in. Looked like Fulmer got jammed on that pitch came in on him and he wasn't able to really muscle that ball easy out. Scott Spezio having a terrific postseason hitting 347 and he's driven in 16 runs. He's had 17 hits. Now here comes Dusty Baker out of the Giants dugout walking out to talk to the home plate umpire. Now he's going to look at Benito Santiago. Benito uh, I don't know if it's something with his glove or his glove hand but whatever it is. Dusty's all right. Did he get hit on the backswing maybe? Yep. Yeah, he sure did. Right around the wrist. So Spezio steps in now. With two out and Gloss at first base. Bottom of the second, no score. Angels looking for their first hit. Gloss is aboard on a walk. Boy, catchers get banged up every which way, don't they? Santiago has been at it a long time, 37 years old. The pitch to Spezio, a strike on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Spees looking down at Renneke. Ortiz and Apier both having much improved outings over game two already. Ortiz was already gone by this point. He throws over to first base and Gloss gets back in. Ortiz lasted an inning and two thirds in his last start. He's pitched an inning and two thirds already tonight without giving up a hit yet. No balls one strike to Scott Spezio. Ortiz looking in taking a long time getting a sign now he has it. Here's the 0 1 to Spees line drive center field but it's playable Lofton almost in his tracks makes the catch. The Angels are turned aside in the second no runs no hits one man left on the walk to gloss and after two innings no score. John Dunstan. Kevin Apier had a one two three second he's retired four in a row. Dunstan's little boy is in the dugout for the Giants as well. He's not too much older than Darren Baker doesn't appear. They're talking to each other right now. Dunstan's son maybe six or seven years old. They have a lot of kids in that dugout. They do. Here's the pitch to Dunstan fly ball right field easily playable by Salmon. He's underneath it and he makes the catch. That is invaluable for Apier. One pitch, one out. Now back to the top of the order and Kenny Lofton coming up. We're talking about all the kids with the uh, Giants, their players and uh, coaches' sons and whatnot. And of course, we have the incident in game five uh, with 
um, Dusty Baker's young son. Uh, Dusty got a call from Sandy Alderson from the commissioner's office about that. Uh, Giants were told they could still have their uh, sons come to Anaheim and be in the dugout. The pitch to Lofton. He bunts. Pretty good bunt. Gloss. Bare hands. Throws. Got him. Nice play by Troy Gloss. Lofton's bid for a bunt single is denied. And probably even more important than that, Apier has two outs on two pitches. Which is unusual for Kevin. He's a guy who usually is prone to high pitch counts. Bottom line on that whole situation with all the sons of the Giants uh, players and coaches in that dugout uh, apparently Major League Baseball will do something uh, this offseason and I don't know that that will be permitted or there might be some age restrictions and whatnot but it will be addressed after the World Series the Darren Baker rule huh yep well he could have really been uh, hurt had uh, JT Snow not gotten him out of the way the other night now Rich Aurelia at the plate he delayed getting up there a little bit just to give Russ Ortiz some time to relax. The pitch to Aurelia is a little bit outside for ball one. Apier started him with a fastball. It's one and zero. Oh. Two out, nobody on. Top of the third, no score. Kevin Apier into his windup, and the one zero -oh pitch on the way. Good breaking ball, but low. Two balls and no strikes. Aurelius seemed to get it going in San Francisco. He's hitting 320 now in the series with a couple of home runs and five runs batted in. Apier into his windup. Here's the 2 0 pitch. That's inside and high, ball three. So after getting two outs with two pitches, now he's 3 0 to Aurelia with Kent on deck. And the former Antelope Valley High School star digs at the dirt. Then gets back up on the mound. Here's the 3 0 pitch Aurelius taking, and it's in there for a called strike. 3 and 1, two out, nobody on, top of the third, no score, only one hit in the game. And that was a solid single into center field by Jeff Kent in the first inning. Kent is on deck now. Apier and Molina had a little uh, trouble communicating the signs. Aurelia steps out of there. They play him slightly to pull. Herstad shaded toward left center field. And Apier comes back 3 1. He walked him with a high fastball. They want to appeal it at first base. Santiago or uh, Molina does, but. It is not appealed and it's ball four so now Kent is the batter. That's the second walk given up by Kevin Apier. The first one was intentional to Bonds. And now Kent steps in there with two out and one man on Kent whistled one up the middle for a single in the first inning. Kent hitting 318 in the series three home runs. Six runs batted in. He had only one run batted in in the first two series the Giants played with the Braves and Cardinals. Apier's first pitch to Kent. Good breaking ball. He starts him with a strike, 0 1. Two out, one on, top of the third, no score. Sold out Edison Field. So many of these folks hoping to come back tomorrow. Here's Apier's 0-1 pitch. That's in the dirt, blocked by Benji. One ball and one strike. Jeff Kent had a good season offensively and defensively. He's a good player. This year, in the regular season, he hit 37 home runs, drove in 108 runs, and batted 313. Here's the 1 1 from Apier. Fastball just missed. Apier thought he had a strike there. Molina held it there, but ball two. Kevin Apier was saying yesterday that 
He had some mechanical problems especially working from the stretch in game two and that after that game after watching some video he detected the problems felt uh, confident they'd be worked out here tonight. Here comes the 2 1 pitch breaking ball popped in the air left side Eckstein going out Garrett Anderson coming in Eckstein has it. Jeff Kent pops up to the shortstop and the Giants are done in the third. No runs no hits they leave one man on base after two and a half no score. Third inning Benji Molina leading things off for the Angels. Russ Ortiz. Into his windup and the first pitch to Benji. A fly ball right field down the line toward the corner, Reggie Sanders, and he makes the catch. Takes the first pitch from Ortiz in there for a strike, 0 and 1. One out, nobody on. Eckstein on deck. Bottom of the third, no score in the game. The Angels and the Giants in game six of the 2002 World Series. Ortiz comes back to the plate, 0 1, and Kennedy takes it down low. One ball and one strike. J.T. Snow playing back way behind the bag at first base. Bell is up on the grass at third for Kennedy. And the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Good off-speed pitch by Ortiz. One and two. If there's a game seven tomorrow, it'll be a 5 o'clock start here at Edison Field. The way it looks right now you'd think John Lackey would be the starter for the Angels tomorrow huh. It appears that way Levon Hernandez will likely go for the Giants. One two pitch inside to Kennedy two balls and two strikes. Ortiz takes a walk back up on top of the mound. Scrapes the dirt from the rubber both feet on the rubber now as he looks in at his veteran catcher Benito Santiago. Ortiz. 2 2 pitch. Kennedy fouls it away. Two San Fernando Valley kids playing in the World Series, battling each other right here. Although Kennedy is an Inland Empire young man born in Riverside who uh, went on to Cal State Northridge. The Angels have Ramon Ortiz out in their left field bullpen, and he is available to pitch in relief tonight. Two balls, two strikes to Kennedy. Ortiz delivers and it's grounded foul. Third base side, it bangs off the facing in front of the Angel dugout and rolls down to the third base line umpire. He tells the fans, just relax, Mike Winters. Everybody was probably yelling for that ball. Maybe he'll give it to him between innings. Two balls, two strikes, Kennedy waiting. Russ Ortiz winds and the 2 2 pitch foul back again. So Kennedy having a good at bat getting a piece of these pitches from Ortiz and staying alive. You're mentioning Mike Winters the left field umpire. These umpires are the cream of the crop in Major League Baseball wasn't always the case that the best umpires would work in the World Series that has changed though over the last couple of years. It's a merit system. These are the umpires that graded out the highest during the regular season. Here's the 2 2 pitch swung on and missed strike three Kennedy chased a breaking ball in the dirt Ortiz gets his first strikeout two out and nobody on David Eckstein coming up now Eckstein flied out to left the first time through the batting order the Angels do not have a hit the Giants have only one. When we get to the fourth, Bonds is due to lead off. Adam Kennedy, the first strikeout victim for Ortiz, chased the pitch in the dirt. He got him fishing, and Adam chased the pitch. It was clearly a ball. Now Eckstein, the pitch by Ortiz, taken down low, ball one. One ball and no strikes to David Eckstein. Two outs, nobody on base. Bottom of the third. Angels batting here in a scoreless tie. Eckstein looks at a strike. One and one. For the ultimate postseason coverage, go to WorldSeries.com. Get exclusive video, live audio, comprehensive stats, and inside stories. WorldSeries.com for baseball around the clock. 
There's a bouncer hit foul by Eckstein. One ball, two strikes. We have a few dark clouds circling over Edison Field. We had rain here at the ballpark last night during the workout day, although neither of these two teams officially worked out. One ball, two strikes. Eckstein waiting. Ortiz comes back one two and it's grounded slowly towards shortstop O'Reilly a fields cleanly and gets him. The Angels are out one two three and Ortiz has gone through three innings without giving up a hit at the end of three no score. Santiago and J.T. Snow middle third of the order. Bonds was intentionally walked his first time up the three times that he's faced Apier here in the World Series he's walked against Kevin every time although in game two of the World Series Apier's two walks against Bonds were not intentional Angels will pitch to him infield shift on and the first pitch that one is a little bit low for ball to count one and oh lost the shortstop is playing almost directly behind second base so it's almost as if there is no one on the left side of the infield Eckstein the shortstop playing right side Kennedy the second baseman is on the outfield grass Spezio the first baseman tight to the line one ball and no strikes on the left handed hitting Barry Bonds the pitch and Bonds takes a strike on the inside corner count even it's one and one Apier was a little bit delayed coming out of the dugout to start this inning and saw him down there talking to Bud Black I'm sure they were saying look we're not going to intentionally walk him but if you do walk him no big deal make sure it's your pitch one ball and one strike Kevin ready and the one one pitch that one's off speed and misses low two balls and one strike bonds in the World Series has had six hits three of them homers He's driven in five runs in the World Series. He's had seven home runs overall in the postseason, batting 350. Here's the 2 1 pitch, and that one missed inside. Three balls in one strike. <laughs> the fans thought something might happen on that pitch. There were more flash bulbs popping on that pitch than any other. So, three and one on Bonds. Apier's next delivery and that one nearly hit him it was low and inside so he walks again. Well, that was one of those unintentional intentional walks if you will it was obvious that Apier was not going to give Bonds anything over the plate. And that last pitch that was ball four uh, would have hit him on the leg had he not jumped out of the way it was low and inside. So Bonds. The leadoff man in the inning on base. Apiers walked three now in the game, one of them intentional. And uh, Kevin's actually thrown more balls than strikes. But he's doing a good job. He's retired seven of the last nine. And he's allowed just one hit. He's ready, and the pitch on Santiago. That's low and inside. It's one ball, no strikes. If Mike Sosha knew before the ball game that he could get six solid innings out of Kevin Apier, he would take it in a heartbeat. And he's given the Angels three so far. No score. We're in the fourth. There's been only one hit in this game. And of course, uh, all of this coming off of the 16 to 4 Giants win in game five. The pitch. There's a bunt on the third base side, but it crosses the line foul. So the count on Santiago even up one ball and one strike. If uh, Sosha knew that Apier would give him three scoreless innings to start the game he would have been exceptionally pleased. But the Angels have not had a hit against Ortiz. The Angels really uh, have not been hitting the ball the way they did all season long since the third inning of game four. They didn't get much in the 16 to four loss. They lost 4 3 the previous game, so that their bats have been a little quiet. Not too many big hits for the Angels in the last few games in the World Series. And no hits so far tonight. So one ball and one strike to count on Santiago. Snow waiting on deck. Napier working with the runner on at first. 
nobody out. 1 1 pitch. And that one missed a little bit low. Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire, his strike zone uh, not that large tonight. Apier's the guy that works the corners, throws a lot of breaking balls. If he doesn't get those calls, can get him in trouble. So it's two and one on Santiago, who normally will chase anything anywhere near the plate. He's a bad ball hitter. There's a toss to first. Bonds gets back. Santiago will rarely walk. And during the regular season, he had 27 walks, eight of them intentional, and over 475 at bats. Two balls and one strike to count here. Apier delivers, and that's in there for a strike. Count even, it's two and two. Barry Bonds has now walked 12 times in this World Series. That's a new World Series record. Nobody, not Mantle, not Gehrig, Ruth, or DiMaggio, nobody has walked more in a World Series than Barry Bonds. Santiago, kind of a deliberate hitter at the plate. He likes to step out of the box. Now he's back in there, swaying the bat below the knees. Cox the bat. Two and two, the count, the pitch. And he grounds the ball sharply to third base. Could be two. Second base one, relay. Got him easily, double play. It was hit sharply at the Angels' third baseman, Troy Gloss. He went to second. Kennedy's relay in plenty of time to get the slow moving Santiago. So two are gone with nobody out, and JT Snow will be the batter. The only thing Troy did that made it a little tougher was throw a kind of a lollipop toss over to Kennedy. Didn't throw it very hard, and that let Bonds come bear right down on Kennedy as he turned the pivot. But Santiago doesn't run well either. So here's JT Snow, who lined out his first time up. If you're ready and the first pitch on snow that breaking ball missed a little bit outside one ball no strikes when the Angels step up in the bottom of the fourth Erstad Salmon and Anderson the batters against Ortiz who's retired nine of the ten batters that he's faced. Here's the 1 0 pitch on JT snow he takes that one outside two balls and no strikes. Great to have you tuned in tonight to game six of the 2002 World Series. Terry Smith along with Rory Marcus. Darren Chan, our producer engineer here at Edison Field. Frank Lafarelli back in Los Angeles at our flagship station AM 570 KLAC. We are certainly hoping we'll be back with you tomorrow at this time for game seven. The 2-0. And that is in there a strike. Two and one. Game seven would be five o'clock tomorrow here at Edison Field. John Lackey and Levon Hernandez. Two balls, one strike on Snow, the former Angel. He's had a good World Series, came in batting 310. The pitch grounds the ball sharply, but right at second. Kennedy eats it up, gets him, and the inning is over. That's it for the Giants. No runs, no hits, no errors. A walk, nobody left. We are set to go to the bottom of the fourth in game six of the 2002 World Series. No score. Erstad is 0 for 1 with a ground out to second. Ortiz ready, gets the sign from Santiago, delivers. Pitch is grounded right to the second baseman. Kent will throw out Erstad. Second time that Darren's been retired, 4-3. Six in a row set down by Ortiz. He's retired 10 of 11 overall in this ball game, and Tim Salmon will be the next batter. Well, in this World Series, and we've reached game six, there really hasn't been a dominating pitching performance by either club, but both of these starters here tonight in game six are pitching very effectively. 
And at this point uh, this is the best pitch game so far we've seen in this series. Here's the first delivery on Salmon. He takes that one for a ball low. It's one ball and no strikes. Tim homered off of Ortiz in game two. He was two for two against them. Salmon batting 278 in the playoffs. 1 0 pitch. That one is low. Two balls and no strikes. Ortiz has been a very steady pitcher over the last four years for this San Francisco club. They were very confident sending him to the mound tonight in game six. 2 0. There's a hard hit ground ball stopped by the shortstop. Aurelia gets up, fires the first, not in time. Ball bounced away as it bounced the snow and off his glove, but he recovers it. Salmon is on. That'll be an infield hit and the Angels' first hit tonight. Nice play by Aurelia. He just couldn't quite get it there in time. He threw low and Snow trying to dig it out kind of scooped it up into the air. Salmon legging it out for all he was worth. The Angels first hit tonight. So here's Garrett Anderson who hit the hardest ball so far off of Ortiz but it was caught Kenny Lofton making the catch out on the warning track in left center. Garrett is 0 for 1 with the lineup. 7 for 25 in the World Series, two RBIs. And now time called as Garrett was tired of waiting. No runs, one hit for the Angels. No runs, one hit for the Giants. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's a do or die game for the Angels. They have to win it. To force a game seven. Ortiz ready delivers, and Garrett takes that one low. Anderson, a big run producer for the Angels during the regular season. 123 runs batted in. 1 0 pitch and a hard hit ground ball but it's stopped by Kenny goes to second for one the relay to first it's an inning ending double play again Garrett hit a ball hard but at someone and Kent went to Aurelia and Aurelia fired to snow and the inning is over on the 4 6 3 twin killing that's it for the Angels here in the bottom of the fourth no runs in the inning one hit no errors and nobody left. So Sanders a strikeout victim will get ready to bat for the second time in this game. He homered against Kevin Apier back in game two of the series. Right hander against right hander. Apier looks in for the sign and the pitch. Uh, first one is a first pitch fastball swung on and missed. No balls and one strike. The home plate umpire Tim McClellan just inspected the baseball there. Apier studies the target of Benji Molina. He's ready. And the next delivery. That one is a pitch that missed for a ball. Count even it's one ball and one strike. Coming into this game, Apier without a victory in postseason play and as far as lifetime against the Giants he's never defeated them 0 and 2 lifetime against San Francisco the pitch it's popped in the air on the left side David Eckstein the shortstop has been busy with some pop ups tonight he's waiting for this one and he'll make the grab on it couple steps back on the outfield grass for out number one one gone David Bell will be the next batter. Bell struck out his first time up. The 
Well, the Angels really needed to have a solid outing from Napier, and he is providing it tonight. Kevin ready to go against Bell, the pitch. And that's in there, a called strike. Off speed delivery. Nothing and one to count. Little or no breeze to speak of. The flags out in left center, draped straight down. A little bit on the chilly side tonight here at Edison Field. Of course, we're in late October now. The pitch. And that one is a pitch that misses for a ball. The count one and one. On deck is the veteran Sean Dunstan, who's their DH. He was the DH against Apier in game two of this World Series. But he went hitless against them the one time he faced them. The pitch, a swing and a miss. Play Apier is doing a very good job of keeping these batters off balance. They are guessing and guessing wrong. Very rarely is Kevin giving them the same pitch two times in a row. So he's doing a good job. Benji Molina calling a good job, a good game behind the plate. One two pitch. That one missed. And the count even. It's two balls and two strikes. Yvonne Hernandez, who's slated to go for the Giants in a game seven if we get there tomorrow. He's over in the dugout watching the action with a lollipop. So he appears to be loose. Some people still contend that if we do get to a game seven that Dusty Baker should go with Kirk Reeder who certainly pitched a lot more effectively than Levon Hernandez when the Angels saw Hernandez in his start which was game three Reeder pitched game four and if they were to bring him back tomorrow if we had a seventh game he would be pitching on three days rest. But Hernandez up until that start in game three had always been a big game postseason pitcher. 2 2. Ball grounded by the mound on the left side. Eckstein tried to dive and stop it as the ball rolled away, and it'll be an infield hit. So Bell is on with a single. That ball out behind second. David Eckstein trying to smother it. He had the ball roll away. Even had he been able to gather in that ball cleanly when he went diving for it. I don't know that he would have gotten Bell. That ball was hit very deep behind the second base bag. So Bell is on. Apier has surrendered just his second hit, and they've both been singles. And now a battle of veterans here in Dunstan and Apier. Dunstan checking down the third base side to get the sign from Sonny Jackson. And still taking a little time before he gets set in the batter's box. Dunstan who is 39 years old is contemplating retirement although he said today that he would like to play again next year but he also indicated that when the World Series was over he was going to sit down with his wife and talk things over and then try to come up with an answer whether or not to continue his big league career. Looks like the Angels are getting some action in the bullpen and it's Frankie Rodriguez who's warming up. Here's the pitch. And that one misses for ball one. It's one ball no strikes. Normally you wouldn't see Rodriguez warming up this early in a ball game nor would you see any reliever up for the Angels in a scoreless ball game in the fifth. But this is a different situation tonight with the Angels facing elimination. They have to win this ball game to force a final seventh game of this series. No score here in the fifth. One out, one on. A toss over to first base. Bell gets back. Bell had only one stolen base during the regular season. Dunstan taking a lot of time the batter as he finally moves back in the box. Apier is ready 
from the stretch and again a toss over to first base and back to the bag safely goes Bell. Kevin with that kind of herky jerky motion of his is a game is a pitcher who you can run against if you guess right takes him a while to get it going to the plate. Here's the pitch and that one is chopped foul on the third base side. So the count even on Dunstan one ball and one strike. Apier has thrown 65 pitches as he works here in the fifth inning. That's a reasonable number of pitches. 33 strikes and 32 balls. He has walked three one of the walks intentional so there with just the three walks that's uh, 12 of the 32 pitches that have been out of the strike zone. One ball and one strike. Again a toss over to first. And Bell gets back to the bag safely. Well the way Bell is attracting attention from Apier you would think that that's Alfonso Soriano over there at first base. But uh, Apier thinking here he'd like to maybe coax Dunstan into hitting the ball on the ground and maybe get out of this inning with a double play. He was able to double up Santiago last inning when he grounded the ball in the infield. The pitch. This one is lifted in the air down the left field side. Garrett Anderson is chasing, still chasing. It's gone. It's a home run. Anderson went back to the wall and that one just got out maybe a couple rows back and that was it the low wall down in the corner and Sean Dunstan who hit only one home run during the entire regular season no homers in the postseason has hit a home run here to give the Giants a two nothing lead. Well with all the big bats in their lineup maybe the least likely to hit a homer the nine hole hitter big two runs right there loft in the batter one out the pitch and that one's in there for a strike nothing and one the count Sean Dunstan who had to wait thirty nine years to play in his first World Series hitting a huge World Series home run here in game six. Here's the pitch and that one uh, fastball misses outside and high one ball and one strike. Well Dunstan getting a kiss and a hug from his son in the Giants dugout over there on the first base side his son has been one of the bat boys for the Giants here during the World Series in the playoffs. Well, you never know in the postseason in World Series, a lot of unsuspected heroes over the years. And right now, Dunstan's looking like a big hero for San Francisco, but there's still a lot of baseball left here. Two balls and one strike to count on Kenny Lofton. Third baseman Troy Gloss is playing up guarding against the speed of loft in the pitch that one is low and in three balls in one strike. Three balls in one strike. And the pitch. That one is drilled in the gap in the right center field. That ball is hit hard. It'll bounce out to the wall. Lofton will easily get the second, and he's there with a double. Rich Aurelia will be the next batter, and Mike Socia is headed to the mound, and we will likely see a pitching change. So we will be seeing Frankie Rodriguez come into this ball game. Apier battled. He did a good job. But might have been running out of some gas here in this top of the fifth inning. 
So Rodriguez will come in. This pitching change is brought to you by Geico. One 15 minute call can save you up to 15% on car insurance. Call 1 800 947 AUTO. We'll be back with more World Series action here in the fifth inning in game six. It's two to nothing San Francisco on the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. He's ready against Aurelia. And the first pitch. That one is a slider that missed inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Sean Dunstan, who hit the two run homer in this inning in the World Series. And of course, uh, three of the games were played in San Francisco under National League rules where we didn't have the DH. 1 0 pitch, and that one is in there, a called strike, a slider, 1 1. But the Giants designated hitters in the uh, series in the first two games, games 1 and 2 here at Edison Field, had gone 2 for 8 with no homers and just one RBI. One ball and one strike the count on Rich Aurelia. Frankie ready and the pitch that one's popped foul over on the right side the count one ball and two strikes. Let's pause 10 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. This is the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. You're listening to the Anaheim Angels on talk radio AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles home of Clark Howard weekdays from 4 to 7 p.m. Benji Molina just went out to the mound to have a word with Frankie Rodriguez. Hey Angels fans visit angelsbaseball.com for the best selection of official World Series merchandise to support your American League champion Angels and dress in style go to angelsbaseball.com. One ball and two strikes on Aurelia. Frankie Rodriguez Chet's second and that pitch is fouled back behind the plate one ball two strikes. Frankie's velocity here in this fifth inning looks a little bit down the uh, slider. He did get a fastball in in this matchup against the really at 94 miles per hour. Frankie ready from the stretch. Again a look at second. There goes the runner. The pitch is outside. Throw to third. Nowhere close. Stolen base. And Kenny Lofton uh, stole that one on Frankie. He got a terrific jump. That was another slider. So a stolen base for Lofton. His fourth in the postseason. And now he is at third base with one out where a fly ball could bring him in. Angels have brought the infield in now with one out and that runner at third the count two balls and two strikes. What Rodriguez needs here is a strikeout. Jeff Kent waits on deck. Frankie ready and the 2 2 pitch ball grounded to Eckstein looks the runner back to third throws the first plenty of time. Good job with the infield and the Angels prevent the speedster Lofton from scoring. Aurelia retired 6 3 on the ground down now two outs the infield can back up. Jeff Kent will be the batter. When the Angels step up in the bottom of the fifth. Gloss Fulmer and Spezio will be the batters against Russ Ortiz who has checked the Angels on one hit in four innings and the only hit an infield hit. Two outs. A lot of ground between Anderson and Erstad out there in left center field. The pitch. Kent swings and misses that slider. Nothing and one to count. Frankie's getting good movement on the slider, but the velocity on it is a little off. That one was 80 miles per hour. 
0 and 1 is the count. Rodriguez delivers, and this one's popped up foul. First base side, Spezio will run out of room. It's back to the seats and out of play, so the count jumps to nothing and two. This was a scoreless ball game going to this fifth inning. Reggie Sanders popped out to start the inning off. David Bell singled, and then Sean Dunstan, who had hit one home run all year, Snuck one over the short porch down the left field side for a two run homer. And it's two nothing Giants as they bat with two outs here in the fifth and Lofton at third base. Fans making a lot of noise trying to root on Frankie Rodriguez to slam the door here on Jeff Kent. 0 2 pitch. And that one bounces off the glove of the catcher Benji Molina and scoring on it easily from third base will be Kenny Lofton. That was a slider and a wild one that Molina couldn't handle and on the wild pitch the Giants make it three to nothing. Boy that one hurts right there because that's a gift run. Lofton stealing third and then scoring on the wild pitch. And that could be a big run. That gives the Giants now a three run cushion. Here's the one two. And there's one tapped on the left side right at Gloss. He has it, throws the first in time, and that'll end the inning. So, boy, that wild pitch. Oh, so costly here in the fifth. The Giants put three on the board in the inning, and they did it with three hits in the inning, no errors. And nobody left. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's game six of the 2002 World Series. 3 nothing San Francisco on the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. Normally Mike Socia extremely calm and collected in the dugout, but he was about as animated as we've seen him at any time this season uh, talking to the home plate umpire pitches in there for a strike to count nothing and one Tim McClellan uh, came over to the Angels dugout and uh, that discussion was going on during the half inning break 0 1 pitch on gloss that one is a strike on the outside corner nothing and two the count. There's still a lot of time left in this ball game, but the Angels have not shown any offense. Only one hit in four innings against Ortiz. He looks in for the sign, ready, and the two strike delivery on Gloss. That one missed a little bit inside. One ball, two strikes. Ortiz has retired 11 of the 13 batters that he's faced tonight. Been aided by one double play. One and two on Troy. Here's the pitch. There's a drive. It's well hit into center field. Lofton is going back. It is at the wall and he catches it. To dead center field. Kenny Lofton with his back against the wall and that ball just gave out. Gloss hit it a ton. But it stayed in the park and Lofton went back as far as he could and was able to reach up and catch it. He went all the way back to the 400 foot sign backing into the wall. One away here in the bottom of the fifth. Angels have hit some balls hard and deep but nothing to show for it. Here is Brad Fulmer as he bats for the second time tonight against Ortiz the pitch and that one from the giant starter is high and away one ball and no strikes. Third baseman Bell way off the line shortstop Aurelia shaded towards the second base area the pitch that one is lifted foul on the left side that's going to get back to the. Upper deck and out of play. One ball and one strike to count.
Ortiz has gotten 13 outs in this ball game. The Angels still have 14 more to play around with, but we'll have to get it going offensively. Trailing three nothing in the bottom of the fifth. The pitch a swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Ron Renicki coaching at third base. Alfredo Griffin coaching over at first base for the Angels. One ball, two strikes. Fulmer in the hole. Back in the lineup tonight as the DH. The 1 2 delivery. That one is low. It bounced away from Santiago, but no one on base. It doesn't matter. As we saw in the top of the inning, when one bounces away and someone is on base, it can be deadly. And that wild pitch with Lofton at third base and two outs in the top of the inning. Men a run. Two and two, the count. Russ Ortiz has the sign. He's ready. And the next pitch on Fulmer. There's a fly ball lifted into right field right at Sanders. Hit pretty well, but a routine play, and that'll be the second out. Two are gone. Scott Spezio, the batter. Spezio tonight has hit the ball hard. His only time up, but he lined out to the center fielder, Kenny Lofton. Russ Ortiz pitching so much better for San Francisco than he did in game two when he did not survive the second inning. He's ready. Here's the pitch on Scott Spezio. And that is a first pitch fastball that misses the count. One ball and no strikes. Ortiz was saying yesterday the biggest thing about his game two outing of the World Series he just wasn't executing pitches that he kept getting behind batters pitch on its way that one is outside he's behind here on Spezio two and oh but in tonight's game he's walked only one Ortiz also said yesterday that he believed that he was ready to help his club win a ball game and so far he's doing quite well 2 0 pitch that one is low and in three balls and no strikes we have two outs we're in the Angels fifth the Giants got three runs in the top of the inning and they lead game six of the World Series three to nothing the 3 0 on Spezio. And that's a strike that caught the inside corner three and one. See what happens on the next pitch as Ortiz gets the sign from his catcher Santiago. Here's the three one delivery and that's right in there. So after falling behind three and oh he's battled back with a couple of strikes against Scott Spezio. Count full three and two. Spezio with more RBIs than any Angel during the postseason. Three balls and two strikes the count. Here's the payoff pitch. And it's fouled back just below us here, right behind home plate. A little bit higher. We would have had another. Baseball up in our radio booth. We've had one during the postseason. Three and two on Spezio, who continues the battle here against Ortiz. Russ Ortiz has a new baseball, studies the target of his catcher, Santiago. Here's the 3 2 delivery. That one's cut on and fouled off down the left side. It'll go back to the seats and out of play. Bonds with no play on it, still 3 and 2. Well, the Angels, after game three of the World Series, led the Giants two games to one. But are now trailing in the 
World Series three games to two and trailing in game six of the World Series three to nothing. Angels won games two and three of the series certainly capable of winning two straight to capture the World Series but the Angels are going to have to fight back tonight. They've done it a lot this season. But trailing three to nothing here in the fifth. Another payoff pitch. Spezio bounces one right to first. JT Snow will flip to Ortiz. He gets to the bag in time. And it's a one, two, three inning for the Giants starter. So the Angels go down quietly here in the bottom of the fifth. No runs or hits, no errors, and nobody left. The sixth inning is next. Three nothing San Francisco. Barry Bonds leading the inning off for the Giants. First pitch was in there for a strike. Angels have the shift on. Three men on the right side of the infield. Outfield is deep. Playing Bonds to pull, and he swings and crushes a ball to deep right field. And that one is way out of here. Boy, that was shades of the home run that he hit off of Troy Percival. It jumped out in a hurry out there into deep right. That one was out near the tunnel and the fans tossed the ball back onto the field but Bonds has hit another World Series home run his fourth. So it's now a four to nothing San Francisco lead. Boy what a postseason Barry Bonds has had his eighth home run in the postseason that's an all time postseason record and boy every one of them that he's hit he's hit hard the pitch that's fouled back behind the plate so the Giants adding on that pitch that Bonds hit against Frankie Rodriguez Frankie knew the moment that Bonds made contact that ball was gone it was just a matter of how far it was going to travel and it was a pitch it was way up in the zone there's one that the batter Santiago checks on they say he went around so the count jumps to no balls and two strikes boy when Bonds hits them he doesn't just hit them he crushes them carbon copy of the home run he hit off of Troy Percival the pitch and that one is a called third strike slider got Santiago. So that's the first out. First strikeout in the ball game for Frankie Rodriguez. Better now is JT Snow who's gone 0 for 2. Rodriguez working in his first full inning of relief. He retired the first two batters that he faced in the fifth inning when he came in to replace Kevin Apier, got the final two outs. But he also threw a very costly wild pitch to bring in a run. The pitch, that one's lined the opposite way. It'll drop into left field for a base hit. So Snow's had a very good postseason. It's his first hit tonight. He's had eight hits in the World Series and a runner on at first base with one out. Reggie Sanders will be the next batter. But Black the Angels pitching coach is going out to the mound to have a word with Frankie Rodriguez. The Angels bullpen is quiet. Hey fans the Angels Dream Week Fantasy Camp is your chance to play alongside Angels greats for five days as you live out your childhood dream to play for the Halos. You're in the lineup every day in your own new style Angels uniform at the team's training site in Tempe, Arizona. For reservations, call 800 888 4376 or visit dreamweek.com. Meeting at the mound is over. Reggie Sanders, the batter, he's 0 for 2. Thank you, Rodriguez. Set. He delivers and there's a swing and a miss. Chase that fastball to count nothing and one. The balls in one strike. Sanders now hitting 
under 200 in the postseason. But he's had a, a decent enough World Series. He's hit two home runs in the World Series and driven in five runs. 0 1 pitch. That one is low and away. It misses the count. One ball and one strike. The Giants with two more home runs tonight in game six of the World Series. And in the World Series, the Giants have hit 14 home runs in six games. The pitch, there's a swing and a miss. One and two, the count. Overall, in the postseason, the Giants have hit 27 home runs. And of course, eight of them, nearly a third of them coming from Barry Bonds. One ball and two strikes the count. Time called, stepping out of the batter's box, Reggie Sanders. One out in the inning, a run in on another. Titanic home run from Bonds the pitch and that is a called third strike Sanders a strikeout victim slider got him Rodriguez gets his second strikeout in the inning two gone and David Bell will be the batter Bell has a single and two times up. And the Angels step up in the bottom of the sixth. And the Angels have 12 more outs available to mount this comeback. It'll be Molina, Kennedy, and then the top of the order, Eckstein. There's a swing and a miss on a fastball. Nothing and a one to count. John Dunstan who hit one of the biggest home runs for the Giants especially in their postseason history is waiting on deck he hit the two run shot last inning the pitch popped in the air on the right side of the infield Spezio got twisted around but still recovers and in foul ground he'll make the catch and that will end the inning. But in the inning, one run, two hits. The home run by Bonds is eighth in the World Series. In the inning, no errors, and one runner left. We are going to the bottom of the sixth. The Angels need runs, trailing San Francisco 4 0 on the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. First pitch, and that one is in there for a strike. Nothing and one the count. Russ Ortiz has retired 14 of the 16 batters that he's faced. The only hit against him, an infield hit, the pitch. And that's outside. One and one to count. The Angels need base runners. One and one to count. Ortiz is set. He delivers. And Benji chased one high and outside and fouls it off on the right side. It's now one ball and two strikes. The only hit for the Angels, an infield single by Tim Salmon in the bottom of the fourth. Two strikes to count on Benji and the one two pitch. He lines one in the right field, but there, waiting and reaching up to put it away, is Reggie Sanders. The balls the Angels have hit hard tonight have gone right at people. In a few lineouts, just one hit. Adam Kennedy will be the next batter. Let's pause 10 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. This is the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. You're listening to Talk Radio. AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles home of the Anaheim Angels Kennedy a strikeout victim is only time up 0 for 1 the pitch he takes that one up and in it's one ball no strikes Ortiz studies the target of Santiago the 1 0 uh, broken bat pop out behind second and it drops out of the reach of Kent for a base hit 
Mike Kennedy had the bat get sawed off but he was able to muscle it just enough out of the reach of Kent for the Angels second hit of the night. So a base runner with one out now the top of the order. David Eckstein the batter. David has gone 0 for 2 tonight with a fly out and a ground out. Eckstein in the first 14 playoff games. This is the 15th postseason game for the Angels. Eckstein's had hits in the 12 of the 14. Done his job hitting over 300 in the postseason. Here's the pitch on him. He takes that one for strike one. No balls in one strike. Next time looking down to Ron Renick who's flashing the signs down in the third base coaching box. Bell a few steps up on the grass on the third base side. Four nothing San Francisco the Angels batting here bottom of the sixth inning in game six of the World Series. Next time again checking. Get the sign from Ron Renicky. Now back in the box. Ortiz is set from the stretch. The giant right hander delivers the pitch. Eckstein lifts the ball hard and deep, but foul down the left field side. He gave that one a ride. We've seen David hit home runs down in that corner. Eckstein corner, if you will. Had eight home runs during the regular season, but he pulled that one foul. Nothing in two the count. Fans want to be part of exciting Angels baseball. Get your deposit in now for your 2003 season seats. You can call 1 796 Halo to secure the best seats. And if you do, you'll get incredible savings over game day ticket prices. Same great seats for all Angels home games. You'll get a VIP card, playoff priority, special events, gifts, and more. Again, call 1 796 Halo. 0 and 2 on Eckstein, the pitch way high with that fastball. One ball, two strikes. Angels have been very quiet tonight offensively. Only two hits. One of them an infield hit, the other one a loop single that just cleared the right side of the infield. Two strikes on David Eckstein. Here's the pitch. He pops it back foul out of play. And the count holding at one ball and two strikes. Well, the Angels know unless they mount a comeback, and it has to be a substantial comeback, that there will be no tomorrow, no game seven. One ball and two strikes. The fans here at Edison Field, especially in the lower section, a lot of them on their feet. Here's the one two delivery. Eckstein again fouling one back, just about the same spot as the last pitch. And then that one ricochets back down to the lower level. Still one and two on David. Eckstein will be part of a major league. Club that will be heading to Japan for games next month. All star series against Japanese clubs. One two delivery. He nubs one softly to the shortstop. Aurelia is one play first in time to get Eckstein. And that will be the second out. Kennedy moves to second. Angels get a base runner to second for the first time in this game. And now Darren Erstad will be the batter. Second time tonight that Eckstein has chopped the ball softly to Aurelia. Erstad is grounded out twice to the second baseman Jeff Kent. Four runs, six hits for San Francisco. No runs, just two hits for the Angels. The 
There's Stad beginning to advance into the batter's box. Aaron's had hits in 13 of the postseason games, but hitless so far tonight. Here's the pitch, and he takes that one low for a ball. One ball, no strikes. The Angels had a two games to one lead in this World Series and were up three to nothing in game four in San Francisco. But from that point on, this series has shifted heavily in favor of the Giants. Here's the 1 0. And that one is low and outside. Two balls and no strikes. Tim Salmon waiting on deck. Four to nothing Giants leading. Russ Ortiz with a long stare in for the sign. Now set the 2 0 pitch. And that's low ball three. Three balls and no strikes. There have been times in Ortiz's career where he tends to nibble it a little bit too much out there on the mound. He's prone to high pitch counts. He's walked only one tonight. He's falling behind here, three and zero. Oh. He's ready, delivers, and Erstad takes like a statue, and that one's right down the heart of the plate for a called strike. Three and one. Ortiz has been a pitcher. Who has benefited from the expanded strike zone? Throws a lot of high fastballs. He has a big overhand curve. I don't know that we've had an expanded strike zone tonight on the part of the home plate umpire, Tim McClellan. But generally speaking, you get the higher strike these days. 3 1 pitch, and that's high. He walked him. So Erstad took what he got. He wasn't going to chase pitches out of the zone. He's on with a walk. Second one issued by Ortiz. Dave Rigetti, the pitching coach for the Giants, is headed out to the mound. The Giants are getting action in their bullpen. They have a left-hander and a right-hander up. Felix Rodriguez is the right-hander. And as far as the left-hander that's loosening up, that looks like Scott Ayer out there. Dave Rigetti trying to settle down his starter Russ Ortiz. Now Tim Salmon who has hit four home runs in the postseason two in the World Series if he could get a hold of one here and he did hit one off of Ortiz in game two here at Edison Field the Angels would be right back in the ball game. A four run lead would shrink to one but a lot easier said than done. Meeting at the mound is over Ortiz ready to work. Here's the pitch on Salmon he cuts it that one and fouls it off on the right side. So it's no balls and one strike. Prior to this inning Salmon had had the only hit for the Angels. And that was an infield hit that he got his last time up. Back in the bottom of the fourth. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, game six. The Angels in a must win situation, trailing four to nothing. This is the biggest threat they've had tonight against Ortiz, but it's a two out threat, the pitch. That's high. And it's one ball and one strike. Angels have good speed on the bases in Kennedy and Erstad. So anything in the gaps and those runners will have a chance to move up two outs one and one on Tim Salmon the pitch and he chased that high pitch he tried to hold up on that fastball couldn't do it that would have been a ball but instead it's now one ball and two strikes and that was kind of vintage Ortiz we mentioned he likes to throw that high fastball and he got Salmon to offer at it. 
tried to hold up on it but had committed himself. So now Tim is in the hole one ball and two strikes. Garrett Anderson would be up next. Ortiz ready. The one two pitch Salmon takes low. That was a good block by Santiago on a pitch that looked like a slider it was low and away out of the strike zone two and two on Tim Salmon. Like could the Angels ever use a hit here. Ortiz is ready. Here's the 2 2 on Salmon. It's grounded foul on the third base side. So Tim hangs in there, and Ortiz will have to throw another pitch. He's thrown 89 pitches as he works here in the sixth inning. 55 of the 89 for strikes, 34 been out of the strike zone. Inning started off with Benji Molina lining out to Reggie Sanders. Then Adam Kennedy got a broken bat bloop single. David Eckstein grounded out there and Erstad walk. Runners at first and second, two outs. Count even. Two and two on Salmon. Here's the next pitch. And that one's high. Or was it? That's a called third strike, says the home plate umpire Tim McClellan, and that will end the inning. That pitch was called a strike. So Salmon is out and the inning is over and that's it for the Angels here in the bottom of the sixth. Sean Dunstan leading off the seventh inning for San Francisco. Back with play-by-play -play action, here's Rory Marcus. All right, thanks, Terry. Dunstan fouls the first pitch back. The count is 0-1 to him. Four runs, six hits, no errors for the Giants. No runs, only two hits. No errors for the Angels. And Frankie Rodriguez delivers low to Dunstan. One ball and one strike. Dunstan, then the top of the order, lofted an Aurelia. But it was Dunstan who had the Knights' big hit, a two-run home run his last time up. He just got it out. Kind of down there in David Eckstein territory in about the third row near the foul pole. There's a swing and a miss at Rodriguez slider strike two. One ball and two strikes. Sean Dunstan the designated hitter. The Angels talking a lot about how happy they'd be to have Brad Fulmer back in there as the DH but Dunstan. The Giants DH and number nine hitter has the big hit in the game, the two run home run. Rodriguez delivery is grounded foul over near the Angel dugout, and the count remains one ball and two strikes. So the Angels are going to need a rally if they're going to live to play tomorrow. They're down four to nothing here in the seventh. The Giants trying to make it three straight wins in this World Series after falling behind in the series two games to one. One ball, two strikes to Sean Dunstan. Rodriguez winds the rookie's one-two pitch as a fastball pops high in the air. That's way up there near second base. Eckstein is calling for it, and he's got it. And Lofton takes one up high, ball one. One ball and no strikes to Kenny. Rodriguez comes right back 1-0, and it's line to right. Salmon coming in. He'll play it on a hop. Kenny Lofton has his second hit of the ball game. Hit number seven for the Giants overall. It's been one of the differences in the World Series. Lofton did not hit well the first couple of games, but since the second game of the World Series, his bat got hot. He's had nine hits now. Get that leadoff man on. Normally good things can happen, and that's been the story for the Giants here. Now Rich Aurelia. Aurelia is 0 for 2 with a base on balls. Hitting 290 in the postseason. He's flied out, walked, and grounded out tonight. Rodriguez throws to first. Lofton, a good base runner, gets back in there. Well, Sean Dunstan, who hit that home run to break the scoreless tie, 
He's a guy that's been around. He's 39 years old, getting a World Series thrill. A few months shy of his 40th birthday. The pitch to Aurelia Lofton goes. It's a pitch out. Molina's throw is on a bounce and into center field. Lofton gets up, heads to third, and he's in there. The Angels pitched out, and Benji still unable to get him. Bounced the throw. It gets by Kennedy and goes into center field. It's a stolen base for Lofton and an error on Molina, and he is at third with only one out. So the bad uh, breaks continue for the Angels. Stolen base, error. And the Angels have to draw the infield in now with the count 1 and 0 to Aurelia. I don't know on that pitch out if Adam Kennedy was aware the Angels were going to pitch out. Here's the 1 0 pitch. It's a squeeze play, but it's fouled away. Not a suicide squeeze. Aurelia may have done that on his own. Lofton was not coming down the line, and Aurelia fouled it off. One ball and one strike. Well, the Giants have played long ball in there. They were trying to play some small ball, taking a page out of the Angels' book, trying to squeeze in a run. One ball, one strike, the count to Aurelia. Lofton at third, one out in the seventh. Rodriguez checks third, the 1 1 pitch. Slider up and in, ball two. There is activity in the Angel bullpen. It looks like Brendan Donnelly is loosening up. Two and one to Aurelia. Infield drawn in. The Angels try not to fall any further behind here. And Rodriguez 2 1 pitch is popped foul up over our heads out of play. Two balls, two strikes. When the Angels bat in the bottom of the seventh, it'll be Garrett Anderson, Troy Gloss, and Brad Fulmer. Russ Ortiz has the Angels shut out on two hits through six innings tonight. Really the first sign of a dominating pitching performance in this World Series by either side. Two balls, two strikes. Rodriguez sets, checks third base, the 2-2 pitch. Line drive, foul, third base side. Frankie Rodriguez could use a strikeout right now. Two and two, the count to Aurelia. Rodriguez, right foot on the rubber as he stares in. The stretch by Frankie, the 2-2 pitch. Slider, got him looking, strike three. Aurelia standing in the batter's box, unhappy with that call. But Rodriguez gets the strikeout he needed. Now the infield can move back with two outs. Good pitch by Rodriguez. That brings up Jeff Kent. Kent is one for three today. He had a single in the first inning. He's popped to short and grounded to third. One for three. Giants four, Angels nothing in the seventh. Rodriguez ready. He looks over at third base. And the pitch to Jeff Kent. Fastball. A little low. Ball one. Outfield straight away for Kent. Of course, Bonds is on deck. In the World Series, Kent has three home runs and six runs batted in after getting no home runs and one RBI in the two previous series. The 1-0 pitch, fastball fouled into the glove of Molina, 1-1. One one. Frankie Rodriguez can finish off this inning. This will likely be it for him. He's thrown a total of 38 pitches right now, so that's a pretty high total for Frankie. He's 1-1 one one to Kent. 1-1 one, one pitch, fouled back to the screen, strike two. One ball, two strikes, two out, Lofton at third base. 
Now the crowd, they rise to their feet, trying to get the final out in this seventh inning. Leave Bonds in the on deck circle. Rodriguez sets, looks at third, the one two pitch. Slider, grounded foul. Kent had a pretty good cut at it. Grounds it foul near the Angel dugout. One ball, two strikes. Jeff Kent overall in the postseason, hitting 274. One and two. Rodriguez ready again. Here comes the right hander's one two pitch. Line drive. That's a base hit into center. Kent drives in the run, and it is five to nothing, Giants. A single into center field. And now Bonds stepping in. Lofton scores on the play. And we'll see if they walk Bonds here. They didn't walk him last time up, and he hit one out. They're not going to walk him this time either. The shift is on. Kent at first base. Bonds at the plate. Rodriguez at the belt. The pitch to Barry, slider high and outside, ball one. I think the Angels infielders thought that they were going to intentionally walk Bonds. Nick Stein and uh, Loss were in their traditional spots. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought they'd walk him last time leading off the inning. They didn't, and he homered. The 1 0, slider in there for a strike, one ball and one strike. Bonds is. Seven for 13 in the series. So, whatever postseason ghosts he had have been blown away. The 1 1 pitch to Barry, fastball downstairs, ball two. It's almost as if uh, during the postseason he's been superhuman. Yeah. Just so much better than the other players. Two balls, one strike. Rodriguez checks first. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Fastball in there. Strike two. Bonds nods his head yes, saying, Yep, that was a good pitch. Two and two, the count to Barry. Kent at first base. Two out in the seventh inning. Rodriguez trying to get him this time after Bonds got him last time. Here's the stretch and the 2 2 pitch swung on and missed strike three. So Rodriguez wins a little battle but so far the Giants are winning the war. They get one more run. Two hits one error one left. We're going to the seventh inning stretch and before we break we're going to have the singing of God bless America. Bottom of the seventh inning, the Angels needing a rally, trailing it five to nothing. 
Garrett Anderson stepping in to start the seventh. Russ Ortiz has him shut out on two hits. First pitch, high and outside, ball one. Anderson, Gloss, and Fulmer for the Angels in the seventh. Ortiz into his windup. The right-hander's 1-0 pitch to Anderson. That's high, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Garrett hitting 297 in the postseason, has seven hits in the series, but they're all singles. The 2-0 pitch, there's a ground ball to second. Kent is up with it cleanly, and he gets Garrett. We'll pause here, 10 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. Radio AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles. Home of Gil Gross mornings 5 till 9 a.m. Now Troy Gloss. Gloss has walked and flied out to center field. Rory Marcus along with Terry Smith and our producer engineer Darren Chan at Edison Field in Anaheim. Gloss stepping in. Ortiz has thrown 93 pitches now. Russ goes into his windup and the pitch on the way to Gloss. Line drive, that's a base hit. Into left field. Bonds fields it on one knee. And Troy Gloss has just the third angel hit, a one out single. Brad Fulmer coming up. Fulmer 0 for 2 has popped to shortstop and flied out to right. The Angels DH 0 for 2. We're talking about Dunstan, the Giants DH. The home run was his first career postseason home run at 39 years old and uh, 218 days. He's the sixth oldest player to ever hit a home run in the World Series. Enos Slaughter was the oldest. First pitch to Fulmer, popped up foul. Slaughter was 40 years, 162 days when he hit one out in 1946. Joe Morgan also hit one out when he was 40 in 1983 for Philadelphia. Joe's here working the game on ESPN radio. No balls in one strike to Brad Fulmer. Gloss at first base being held on by J.T. Snow and Fulmer waits. The 0 1 pitch from Ortiz that's low and outside. One ball one strike. Spezia would be next. The Angels had a couple of men on last inning but Salmon took a called third strike with runners at first and second and two outs. One and one to Brad Fulmer. Gloss with a short lead. The stretch by Ortiz on the 1-1 pitch. In the dirt, blocked nicely by Santiago. 2-1 and one the count. Giants 5, Angels nothing in the bottom of the 7th. They've had so many rallies this year, so many late inning heroics. Do they have another one left in them? The crowd staying right where they are. They continue to make noise. They have faith. I'll tell you if somehow some way they did come back and win this game <laughs> what kind of momentum would they have going into tomorrow two and one to Fulmer Ortiz delivers and it's ripped into right field that's a base hit Gloss stops at second base but for the first time tonight the Angels have back to back hits first and second one out Scott Spezio coming up. Scott Ayer and Felix Rodriguez continuing to throw in the bullpen. And here comes Dusty Baker. So that might be it for Ortiz. He has a four hit shutout working. But this is a game that the Giants could end this series. Well, no matter what they do, and it looks like they're going to go with the right hander. So it'll be Rodriguez. Spezio just be uh, having the advantage. He'll swing from the left side. 
Felix Rodriguez is coming in. This pitching change is brought to you by Geico. One 15-minute call can save you up to 15% on car insurance. Call 1-800-947. And they both pitched well. Yep. Scott Spezio up there. Giants ball game. Rodriguez 0 and 1 in the postseason. Salmon took him deep in the 11 to 10 Angels win to beat him. Spezio at the plate. Gloss at second. Fulmer at first. One out in the seventh inning. Rodriguez delivers and it's a fastball outside. Rodriguez throws hard, 94 miles an hour on that one. Spezio, a switch hitter, batting left handed, hitting 333 in the postseason. In a way, Felix Rodriguez is an older version of the Angels' Frankie Rodriguez. This is a big at bat for Scott Spezio. The 1 0 pitch is popped up foul coming back out of play. Back up into the seats and the count one ball and one strike. Dan Quisenberry in 1980 and Daryl Knowles in 1973 are the only two pitchers other than Felix Rodriguez now to pitch in the first six games of a World Series. One ball and one strike. To Spezio. Gloss at second. Fulmer at first. One out in the seventh. Spezio waits. Rodriguez 1 1 pitch is fouled back again. Strike two. He's kept it away from Spezio on both of those foul balls. Scott reaching for pitches on the outside corner. So Encino's. Russ Ortiz pitched a good ball game tonight for six and the third. He comes out with a five nothing lead. One ball two strikes to Spezio Benji Molina on deck. Although they could go to a left handed pinch hitter. It's one and two. Rodriguez a long look in at Santiago. Now he's set. Here he comes, one, two. It's fouled away again. Rodriguez has gone with exclusively fastballs for the first four pitches to Scott Spezio. Scott trying to come through with a hit here to get the Angels on the board, make them feel like they're in the ball game. The Giants scored three in the fifth inning, one in the sixth, and one in the seventh. It's five to nothing San Francisco. One ball two strikes to Spezio. Felix Rodriguez at the belt steps off the rubber. Boy he's as deliberate a worker as you'll find anywhere. Yeah he works at his own pace. He likes to set the tempo out there on the mound. He does everything slow except the pitch when it comes in. One ball, two strikes. Spezio waiting. Rodriguez delivers, and it's outside ball two. Two balls and two strikes. One out, two men on. Five nothing Giants in the bottom of the seventh inning. Game six, the Angels with their backs flat up against the wall. And the count two and two to Scott Spezio. Rodriguez with his sign from Santiago checks the runners and the two two pitch fouled away again. Spezio fouling pitch after pitch back to the screen. That was a 97 mile per hour fastball from Felix Rodriguez. Scott fighting that pitch off. Spezio's done a good job to stay alive with two strikes. 
Trying to connect with one of those fastballs and send it into the outfield. Two and two to Scott Spezio. One out, two men on. Angels being shut out, 5 nothing at the moment. Rodriguez, 2-2 pitch, is outside and high, ball three. The count goes full, three and two. Gloss at third, Fulmer at first in another situation. Sosha might have them running. But their runs don't mean that much in a five-run game. Uh, he won't take the chance here. The count full to Spezio, three and two. Big pitch coming up. Rodriguez sets. The 3-2 pitch is belted to right field. Back on it goes Sanders at the wall. He can't get it. Home run. And they're back in the ball game. Scott Spezio, a three-run home run to right field into the corner. And it's the Giants five, the Angels three in the seventh. He got a hold of one of those fastballs all right. Spezio saw a lot of pitches from Rodriguez. And then he timed one and hit it out. Rodriguez is upset with himself. JT Snow just kind of grabbed his jersey and said, hey, come on, we're still ahead. Boy, I don't know that we've seen a bigger at bat, a more impressive at bat by an angel this season. You mentioned, Rory, how Spezio kept fouling off pitches to stay alive, and then he hit a 94 mile per hour fastball back into about the second row of seats there, the uh, right field area where there's that low porch, and snuck it out. Giants five, Angels three. Spezio delivers a home run. It wasn't Snow that yanked on Rodriguez. Jersey was Kent. Here's Palmero pinch hitting for Molina, and he swings and misses at a fastball, 0-1. But the Angels are right back in the ball game. Giants five, Angels three in the bottom of the seventh. And the crowd standing and cheering. They're back in the game as well. Not that they ever weren't. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed by Palmero. A 95 mile an hour fastball. He threw it by him. 0-2. It looked like Reggie Sanders thought he was going to catch that ball. But he just ran out of room as he hit that small wall down in right field. He was getting ready to put the glove up and snag it. And all of a sudden, he was hip checking the wall. 0 and 2 to Palmero. The pitch by Rodriguez is fouled away at the plate. Well, that one hits Santiago. So the Angels draw to within two. Santiago is shaken up a little bit. The Giants trainer is going to come out and see about him. He's been an Iron Man for them in the postseason. He has been behind the plate for every single one of their innings in the postseason. 16 ball games. I'll tell you, down two right now. You think about two runs the Giants got, one of them on a wild pitch that Benji Molina just tried to backhand and it went by him, and one on Bonds' home run when they elected to pitch to him leading off an inning. Right now, those two runs are the difference. No balls, two strikes to Palmero. One out, nobody on. Palmero batting for Molina. Kennedy on deck with one out here in the seventh inning. Santiago takes a toss from Rodriguez. He's trying to decide if he's okay to stay in. He's tough though. He's going to stay in. Kind of unwraps his glove to take a look at his right hand. 
Espizio with the three run homer has driven in 19 runs here in the postseason. That's more than any player on the field. No balls, two strikes to Orlando Palmero. Felix Rodriguez sets. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball outside. One ball, two strikes. Palmero one for five in the postseason. Rodriguez struck him out last time he faced him. One and two to Orlando. The Angels trying to find some more of that magic that they've had all season long. They were down five nothing. They're down now five three. Palmero waits. Rodriguez sets on the one two pitch is foul back out of play. That's off to the left. It's still one and two. Rodriguez has thrown 13 pitches to one batter plus Palmero. He's thrown Orlando four pitches so he went nine pitches to Spezio. Spezio hitting the ninth for a home run. One ball two strikes. Rodriguez ready again here he comes one two and it's high and outside. If they can get Palmero on they can bring the tying run to the plate. Two balls two strikes. Orlando waiting. Rodriguez at the belt. Here he comes 2 2, and it's fouled back again. Just as Spezio did, Palmero fouling a lot of pitches back, hanging in there against the tough fastballs of Felix Rodriguez. But one thing about it when we talk about the fact that he's been in every game, that means just about everybody the Angels have have seen him now. Two balls, two strikes. One out, nobody on base. Giants five, Angels three in the seventh inning. Felix Rodriguez at the belt. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. He finally wins the battle with Palmero. And with the left handed hitting Kennedy coming up, Dusty's going to go get him. And they'll go to Scott Ayer, I'm sure. So another pitching change for San Francisco. Rodriguez comes out having given up the home run and then getting Palmero on a strikeout. With two out and nobody on, left handed reliever Scott Ayer coming into the ballgame. As far as air in the postseason for the Giants. Scott Air, a pitcher the Giants got during the season. He was uh, placed on waivers by the Blue Jays. Giants claimed him, and he's done a good job for them. He's a guy who throws hard. 44,506 here this evening, hoping to come back tomorrow. The Angels with a big hill to climb at 5 0, but they're a little better than halfway up now. Kennedy with two out and nobody on here in the seventh. Scott Air looking in. Now he goes into his stretch his first pitch of the game breaking ball inside ball one to Kennedy. One ball and no strikes air in this postseason has not allowed an earned run E Y R E. The 1 0 pitch a liner into left field that's a two out single for Kennedy. Well, Mike Sosha is showing some confidence there, letting Kennedy bat against the lefty. He could have brought in Sean Wooten. He could have 
brought in a Alex Achoa or a Benji Gill, and that very well might be it now for air. Oh yeah, they'll go to a right-hander now. Dusty Baker comes out, so Scott Air made two pitches. Kennedy gets the two-out single, and with right-handed hitting David Eckstein coming up, they'll go back to the bullpen again. The first pitch to David Eckstein, he takes and it's a strike, 0 and 1. You could have bet the house he would take that pitch. Bullpen is quiet for San Francisco. Laurel, the third reliever they've used this inning. Laurel leans in, glances over his shoulder at Kennedy. Here's the 0 1 to Eck. Low and away, ball one. Russ Ortiz charged with two of the runs. Just sitting on the Giants bench in the dugout. He did his job, no question about it tonight. One and one to Eckstein. Here's the stretch by Warrell on the pitch. David hits one into right field. Sanders is there and makes the catch. He was playing him shallow, and the ball kind of curled into Sanders' glove. But the Angels are on the board. Three runs, four hits, no errors, one man left. And Jose Molina at the plate as the catcher now. Benji came out for the pinch hitter. Bud Selig's here wearing an orange and black tie. Interesting. Santiago at the plate. Donnelly's pitch knocks him down. And the crowd cheers as Brendan came in with a little chin music of his own. Just the Angels way and Donnelly's way of saying hey we're still here. That was a long time coming. One ball and no strikes to Santiago. He'll be followed by Snow and Sanders for the Giants in the eighth. It's critical for the Angels not to give the Giants any more runs. When they were trailing 6 0 in San Francisco, they made it 6 4. But then Jeff Kennedy, a two run home run that made it 8 4, and the tide really turned there. There's a strike into Santiago. One ball and one strike. Scott Spezio with the 19 RBIs is tied an all time postseason record for RBIs by one player in the postseason. Sandy Alomar had 19 in the 97 World Series for the Indians. There's a pop fly foul by Santiago. One ball and two strikes. Brendan Donnelly rubbing up a new baseball. Santiago in the postseason hitting 234. Giants five, Angels three, top of the eighth inning at Edison Field in Anaheim. The Angels trying to come from way behind tonight and force a game seven tomorrow. Here's the one two pitch. He knocked him down again. Did he swing? No. They appealed it to say that Benito swung at that pitch. He went down with his bat in his hands. And it was that was up around eye level. I don't think he was swinging at it. He kind of started forward but held up and went down onto the ground. Two balls and two strikes. I think the first one was a purpose pitch. I don't know that time if he was trying to do it again. I, I kind of doubt it. Oh, he had to count one and two on him on that last pitch so not really sure he might have been looking to go back at him again two balls two strikes Donnelly's two two pitch is up and in ball three and now it's a full count three and two snow on deck Reggie Sanders to follow we're in the top of the eighth inning the Giants five the Angels three 
Santiago has popped up and into a double play and struck out. Donnelly ready now. Here he comes 3 2. Slider grounded foul. The reason why Donnelly or the Angels in general have singled out Santiago here to brush him back. You got to keep in mind he's the guy behind the plate calling for the Giants pitchers to do it to the Angel hitters. So that's why he was targeted here. Three balls two strikes. Brendan Donnelly working from a stretch his 3 2 pitch he walked him with a slider outside and low. So Benito draws a walk leading off the eighth inning. And he kind of flicked his bat over towards the dugout and it looked like he might have said something to Donnelly as he was walking to first base. J.T. Snow coming up now. So purpose pitch or not and at least one of them was Donnelly did not want to then walk him which he did. Now snow at the plate. The Giants have out hit the Angels tonight eight to six. We're in the top of the eighth inning. The Giants lead the Angels five to three. Donnelly checks first. Here's the pitch to Snow. A drive hit into center field, but her stat is there. Gives a little ground and makes the catch. With one out, Reggie Sanders coming up. Fans, the Angels are hosting two charity golf tournaments during the month of November. The 24th annual 65 Roses Golf Classic will take place on November 4th, and the inaugural Angels Care Golf Classic on November 18th. Call the Angels Community Relations Office at 714 940 2174 for more information. Reggie Sanders at the plate now. One out, one on. Donnelly delivers. Sanders swings through the slider, 0 and 1. David Bell on deck for the Giants. Sanders 0 for 3 tonight, 189 in the postseason. When the Angels bat in the bottom of the eighth, they have Erstad, Salmon, and Anderson. Troy Percival has gotten up in the Angels bullpen. No balls, one strike. So if the Angels are down only two or whatever the situation in the bottom of the eighth, they have numbers two, three, and four coming up. And it will be time for those guys to come through. 0 and 1 to Reggie Sanders. Donnelly looks at first in the pitch. That's foul back out of play. So Brendan jumps ahead of Sanders 0 and 2. Mike Sosha was saying the last couple of days that there was the chance that Percival would have an expanded role here in game six, but he also mentioned that by saying if we had the lead that he might be more inclined to bring in Percy to maybe get four or five outs as opposed to just working an inning in relief and getting three situation a little different trailing by a couple no balls two strikes to Sanders the pitch is swung on and missed Donnelly blows him down with a fastball. Two outs. And David Bell coming up. The Angels trying to force a game seven. It looked like they might go down quietly tonight. Trailing five to nothing going into the seventh. But all of a sudden they're showing signs of life. Three runs in the bottom of the seventh. Now trying to get out of the top of the eighth down by only two. Donnelly working on David Bell. The pitch to him. Fouled back to the screen 0 and 1. Bell tonight has struck out singled and fouled out one for three. He has scored a run tonight. Santiago at first base two outs in the top of the eighth. The top of the order 
for the Giants if Bell gets on Dunstan the number nine hitter and then they'd have the top of the order up again so they'll get those guys up in the ninth. Here's the 0 1 pitch that's popped up foul coming back towards the screen Jose Molina but he'll not have room and the count is 0 and 2. No balls two strikes to David Bell. Donnelly with a new baseball walking around on the grass to the right of the mound. Bell is hitting 373 in the NLCS and World Series combined. Jose Molina on orders from Mike Sosa just went out to the mound to talk to Donnelly. But you could see Mike trying to get Jose's attention with all the noise and telling him go out there. And they're having a fairly long conversation now. Jose turns and comes back behind the plate. Two outs, one man on. Top of the eighth inning, five to three, San Francisco. Donnelly staring in. Brendan into his stretch. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Oh, just outside. Donnelly, along with the rest of the Angels, were ready to go to the dugout. I don't know how that pitch missed. Uh, that pitch was a strike. Blew the call. That was even above the knees, that pitch. He had to have said it was outside, I guess. The 1 2 is outside, a slider low and away. Two balls and two strikes to David Bell. Tim McClellan from the very first inning has had a tight strike zone. I don't think there's any question about it. Boy, that 0 2 pitch looked right there. Two balls and two strikes to Bell. Two out, one man on. Five to three Giants in the eighth. And the 2 2 pitch swung on and missed. Donnelly gets him with a hard slider and the Giants are gone in the eighth. And the crowd making a lot of noise hoping for some late inning dramatics from the Angels. The Angels don't want any part of that. They want to rally right now to at least tie it. And they have numbers two, three, and four in the batting order. Erstad, Salmon, and Anderson coming up. Erstad has grounded out twice and walked tonight. He's 0 for 2. Tim Morrell got the final out of the seventh inning. Giants 5, Angels 3. Erstad has 23 hits in the postseason, none tonight. Worrell delivers, and it's outside ball one. Certainly, the Angels would be more than content with a base on balls. They want to get somebody on base to bring the tying run to the plate. And they'd love to get that leadoff man on Erstad with Salmon and Anderson and Gloss hitting behind him. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Darren. That's a breaking ball on the outside corner, 1-1. One and one. Giants have out hit the Angels tonight, 8-6. To but the Angels were in a 5 nothing hole until Spezio's three-run home run in the bottom of the seventh. One ball and one strike. Here's the pitch by Warrell. Drive hit into right field. That ball is crushed. That ball is gone. And they are within one in the bottom of the eighth. Five to four, San Francisco. Darren Erstad starts the eighth inning with a home run. That's his second home run of the postseason, his first here in the World Series, and all of a sudden the Angels are starting to take a page out of the Giants' book, beating them at their own game with home runs. Now Tim Salmon with the Angels down by only one. 
Worrell delivers inside. Ball one to Salmon. This crowd never lost faith, and maybe somehow the Angels can reward it. Here's the 1 0 to Salmon. A drive into center field. Lofton can't get it. Base hit. And the tying run is on base. Here comes Sean Figgins to run for Salmon. Garrett Anderson representing the potential go-ahead run at the plate. He has not had a postseason extra base hit, a World Series extra base hit, I should say. Pitching coach Dave Rigetti goes out to talk to Tim Morrell. And the crowd is absolutely thunderous, hoping and just praying for a comeback. The Angels were down five to nothing. It's now five to four with nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. And to look at Garrett Anderson, you'd think he was on deck in a softball game. Just so calm. But that's his manner. The Giants have gotten Rob Nen up in their bullpen. And the Angels have Troy Percival out there in the bullpen as well so both closers loosening up Sean Biggins carrying a potential tying run the pitch to Garrett Anderson ground ball snow fields it foul oh it's a good thing because that would have been a double play that wasn't the most emphatic of calls by first base umpire Jerry Crawford Owen one to Garrett Anderson Higgins at first nobody out in the bottom of the eighth the Angels down five to four the hits are even now eight apiece Garrett Anderson is due there's no doubt about it he's due he's the cleanup hitter and it's on his shoulders now against Worrell in his career he's only two for 13 Garrett calls time and backs out of there Troy Gloss on deck for the Angels. What a game. What a World Series. Here it comes 0-1. Popped on the left field line. A long run for Bonds. He won't get to it. Figgins to third base. Bonds stumbles and falls. Figgins stays at third. Anderson to second. have runners at second and third with nobody out and Dusty Baker is going to go to Rob Nen right now Garrett Anderson a bloop double down the left field line if Figgins had seen Bonds fall down he might have been able to score but with nobody out Renicky holds him up there at third base Bonds got to the ball, tried to play it on one hop with the bare hand. He muffed it, and then as he tried to pick it up, he slipped on the dirt. I don't think Figgins saw that happen. And Rob Nen, he's had a tremendous year, 42 saves. And if he saves this one five to four, he will have done some kind of job. Troy Gloss with seven postseason home runs at the plate. Listen to the crowd. What a game this has turned out to be. It didn't look like it was going to be much fun for the Angels, but it's certainly gotten better. Rob Nen, his first pitch to Gloss is up high, ball one. Brad Fulmer is on deck. First base is open. It's the Giants five, the Angels four in the eighth inning. Gloss trying to get the hit that could possibly send us back here tomorrow. 
Nin delivers 1-0, and it's waved at and missed. A pitch way outside. Gloss over anxious. One ball and one strike to Troy. That pitch was a foot and a half outside. That was closer to being a wild pitch than it was a strike. One and one to Troy Gloss. Nen staring in. The giant closer. Steps off the rubber as Gloss calls timeout. One and one the count. Now they're ready again. Nen into his stretch. Here's the one one pitch. Outside and low. Did he swing? They appeal it. No. Two and one. The infield is back for the Giants, which means even a ground ball here would tie the game. Two balls and one strike to Troy Gloss. The never say die Angels giving their fans a thrill down the stretch in the bottom of the eighth inning. Two balls and one strike. Nen delivers and it's belted left field in the gap. It's in there for a double. Here comes Biggins. Here comes Anderson. The Angels take the lead. Six to five. He got it off their closer too. That makes it hurt even that much more and chink in the armor. The Giants have had such terrific bullpen work in the postseason in the World Series. But tonight they weren't able to hold on to a five run lead. What a rally for the Angels in the bottom of the eighth inning. They've scored three times. Here is Fulmer. He pops one up foul out of play. Angels six Giants five the most improbable rally of the year I think the Giants were ahead five to nothing they needed nine outs to go home champions now they need a ninth inning rally Gloss ripped that ball in between Bonds and Lofton now they'd love to get Troy home he's at second base with nobody out 0 and 1 to Fulmer Nen delivers and it swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes. Even though the Angels have gotten three runs here in the bottom of the eighth to take their first lead of the night, you got to go back to last inning when Spezio hit that three run homer. That opened the door and yep. now the door is busted open. And he's on deck. The Giants have the top of the order due up in the ninth. Don't forget about that. No balls, two strikes to Brad Fulmer. At least they want Fulmer to hit the ball to the right side to get Gloss to third. Nan into his stretch. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Line foul. Oh, look out. That ball hits the wall of the camera well and comes blasting back out of there. Luckily, it didn't hit anybody. It's still 0-2 to Brad Fulmer. Spezio waiting on deck. The Angels leading it six to five in the eighth inning. Rob Nan into his stretch. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Line drive down the right field line. Foul, no, foul ball, foul ball. Oh, just foul. Sanders went over there. He couldn't have gotten to it. And that one wasn't fouled by more than an inch or two. Fulmer hit a very high fastball up around his eyes. And at the last second, you can see that Fulmer thought it was going to be fair because he started running harder as the ball went down the line. It just hooked foul. Fulmer really showed his strength on that one because as you mentioned, Rory, it was an eye-high fastball that he turned and pulled. No balls and two strikes to Brad Fulmer. 
Rob Nanchek second. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Nen gets him with a slider. Now Spezio coming up with one out. Spezio hit the three-run home run in the bottom of the seventh that got him going, but he won't do it this time because Dusty's going to walk him intentionally. A good move here by Dusty Baker. It sets up a potential double play, and Jose Molina, who has hardly had a chance to hit at all, is coming up next. <laughs> the crowd booing the intentional walk. Jose Molina has had one at bat in the entire postseason. Well, he's had a lot of time to think about it then. <laughs> yeah, he has. <laughs> There's ball three to Spezio. This is going to be uh, when Molina comes up, it'll be his first World Series at bat. Let's pause 10 seconds for our stations to identify themselves. This is the Anaheim Angels Baseball Network. The Anaheim Angels on Talk Radio AM 570 KLAC Los Angeles. Home of Dr. Dina Dell, weekdays from 3 to 4 p.m. Dave Rigetti makes a quick trip to the mound to talk to Santiago and Nen. I'm sure that he's saying, all right, this is Jose Molina. It's not Benji. We haven't faced him yet. Here's what we've got. In the last 12 at bats, the Angels have eight hits. They have taken what looked like a hopeless cause and turned it into a celebration so far. Remember, they have three more outs to get, though, in the ninth. It's six to five Angels here in the bottom of the eighth. Troy Percival, who figures to come in in the ninth, has worked one inning so far in the first five games of the World Series. The first pitch to Jose Molina, he bunts foul. Ooh. Mike Sosia calling for the bunt, and that, if he had laid down the perfect bunt, would have been a hit because Bell was playing deep at third, but he fouled it away. One out, runners at first and second. Three runs in the seventh, three more here in the eighth for the Angels. They lead six to five. What a game tonight at Edison Field. What a season. Here's the stretch by Rob Nen. The 0-1 to Molina. He bunts, good bunt, third base side. Nen fields it, goes to first, and they get the out. But it's a sacrifice bunt for Jose Molina. He got the job done. The play goes 1-4, runners at second and third with two outs now, and Adam Kennedy with a chance to give the Angels a little insurance if he can get a hit right here. Kennedy at the plate. Two for three tonight. He struck out his first time up. He has two singles. Nen sets. He delivers, and Kennedy takes high and outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes to Adam. If he gets on, Eckstein would be next. First base is open. The 1 0 pitch, swing and a miss. That good, hard, sinking slider from Nen. Kennedy missed it. One ball and one strike. Troy Gloss delivered the double to score two to give the Angels the lead off of Nen. The Giants have used five pitchers tonight. One ball and one strike. Here's the stretch by Nen in the pitch. Fastball way up high. Santiago comes out of his stretch, out of his crouch to grab it. Gloss at third, Spezio at second. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Dusty Baker went to Nen with a one-run lead and two men on, and he was unable to pull it off. The 2-1 pitch, high and away, ball three. 
three and one to Kennedy. Two on, two out. Nen staring in. The Giants right-hander set at the belt. 3-1 pitch is stroke foul. He hit it hard, but he was way out in front of it and pulled it too much. Three balls, two strikes. The Angels all of a sudden, three outs away when we get to the ninth of forcing a seventh and deciding game in this World Series tomorrow. The count is full to Kennedy. Three and two. Nen delivers and it's fouled back out of play. Count remains three balls, two strikes. Adam Kennedy in the postseason hitting a lofty 372 with four home runs and 10 runs batted in. Two on, two out, a 3-2 count on Kennedy. Nen ready. He delivers, and it's fouled into Santiago's glove. Strike three. Angels still need three outs, however. Troy Percival is in to try and get them. Alex Ochoa is in the game now in right field. Tom Goodwin, a left-handed swinger, is going to hit for the Giants to lead off. He'll bat for Sean Dunstan here in the ninth. So they'll have Goodwin, Lofton, and Aurelia. If anybody gets on, Kent. If they get two on, Bonds. So don't go away. Goodwin facing Percy. The Angel closer in the game now. Goodwin in the postseason does not have a hit as yet. Percy staring in. And his first pitch is way up high, ball one. Ochoa in right, so the Angels, Anderson in left, Erstad in center, Ochoa in right. The Angels have scored six runs in the last two innings to grab the lead from the Giants. Here's the 1-0, it's in there, strike called. A 95 mile an hour fastball from Percival. One ball, one strike to Goodwin, he's 0 for six in the postseason. Percival sets. The 1-1 delivery, outside and high, ball two. Two balls into strike. Percy has only one appearance in the series so far. He has five saves in the postseason. He's only pitched seven and two-third innings in the postseason. Here's the 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed, strike two. Goodwin tried to slap that one the opposite way. He asked McClellan, was that a strike? And you could see the home plate umpire shake his head yes. The count, two balls and two strikes to Tom Goodwin. Kenny Lofton, who has a couple of hits tonight, on deck. Percy set. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And the Angels are two outs away from forcing a game seven in the World Series tomorrow. Kenny Lofton has a double and a single, two run score tonight. He's two for four. Troy Percival leaning in for his sign as Lofton waits. Here's the pitch to Kenny. Pop fly foul out of play. 0-1. Angels six, Giants five. The Giants led five to nothing going into the bottom of the seventh inning. The Angels got three in the seventh and three in the eighth. 
somehow, some way, they've come back tonight. Here's the 0-1 to Lofton. Strike two called. Percy took something off of that one and got it in there at the knees. The count 0-2 to Lofton. Percival into his stretch. The 0-2 pitch just outside. Oh, the crowd ready to explode, but he missed outside with it. One and two, the count. Rich Aurelia on deck for the Giants. Percival shakes Jose off from his stretch. The one-two pitch fouled away. Lofton reaching for an outside fastball and getting a piece. Kenny Lofton having a good postseason, hitting 313 with a home run and six runs batted in. In the owner's box, Jackie Autry holding hands with a person on her right, her arm around the person on her left. One ball, two strikes to Lofton. One out and nobody on in the ninth inning. Percy's one-two pitch is popped up foul and out of play. Jose Molina gives it a look, but it's well back, about halfway back. One and two. Tomorrow would be a five o'clock game. The Angels would pitch John Lackey, we assume. The Giants would go with Hernandez, LeVon Hernandez. It's one ball and two strikes to Kenny Lofton with one out in the ninth inning. Percy is set. Here comes the one, two. Change up outside. Two balls and two strikes. Lofton waiting. The count has run to two and two. No team has ever come back from five runs down in an elimination game. But there's a pop fly on the left side. Gloss in foul ground makes the catch. Two outs in the ninth inning. The Angels are one out away from sending it to a game seven tomorrow when they look like they were dead and buried tonight. Rich Aurelia who definitely has home run power at the plate. 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. Aurelia has six postseason home runs. This is the guy Percy really wants to get to leave Kent in the on-deck circle and leave Bonds on the bench in the ninth inning. Percy's ready. The pitch to Aurelia. High ball one, a high fastball. One ball and no strikes to Aurelia. Two out, nobody on in the ninth inning. Angels six, Giants five. Game six of the World Series. Percy is ready. The 1-0 pitch. Fastball in there. One and one. A 95-mile-an-hour heater from Troy Percival. Ten hits in the game for the Angels, eight for the Giants. Percy set again. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Fastball missed. Two and one. A little bit low and outside. Percy goes to the rosin bag. He's gotten the two outs. He's trying to get the third and final out to complete an amazing Angel comeback. Two balls, one strike to Aurelia. One out away from a game six win. The 2-1 pitch is fouled back, strike two. And now the Angels are one strike away from forcing a seventh game tomorrow. And the thunderous crowd standing, cheering, banging together the red thunder sticks trying to will Percy to a third out, a third strike, a seventh game, an incredible comeback win. They're one strike away from all of that. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed! He struck him out with a high fastball! The Angels win the game, 6-5! Oh, what a ball game for the Anaheim Angels! A 
season of tremendous highlights, great moments, and fantastic wins. This one tops them all. The Angels were faced with elimination. Their backs to the wall. And they come back. Three in the seventh, three more in the eighth. Just another Halo victory. finish what a world series it has been and there's one more to go the angels thrill this crowd of 44,506 tonight with a six to five come from behind improbable victory over the san francisco giants they had the world championship in their lap in the seventh inning Percy gets the Giants in order. He strikes out two. I see Terry Smith down there talking to Darren Erstad, so we'll have him on our postgame show tonight.